Okay. Five, Very good. Four, Hello, everybody. There's three, always something new to learn two, in a rogue kitchen. One. We learn by playing with our food. It's Rogue Kitchen Live. Hey, I want right, to thank everybody live. for joining us again today. Jimmy, our moderator here, always does a great job. Um, anything you want to add, Jimmy, at all? Or welcome. All right. No, I'm, ex I'm excited for today. Um, what we got on the books for today is one of my favorite meals when I go to a sushi place. You know, rather than getting uh, typical sushi or anything, I go for hand rolls. Uh, my wife, too. We just we load up on a whole series of hand rolls. And so it's always Absolutely. fun. Uh, I to apologize there for stepping away. I noticed our kit, screen you know, was uh, turned upside down there on the phone, so I had to turn that around. So, yeah, so today we're going to do some we to use, uh, so. Japanese hand rolls. Traditionally, hand rolls have um, like raw fish in them, so they have like sushi grade tuna or salmon in there. Um, but today we are doing a Fourth of July leftover meal prep, and so we're putting a kind of a slight twist on some hand rolls. Uh, we're going to use some uh, baby back ribs. I've got some extras here left over, uh, and uh, so we'll. You know, we'll, we've, we've got some rice cooked up over here. Uh, we've got some pickled vegetables. I'll walk through how to uh, how to pickle those vegetables, uh, mainly pickled carrots, and um, ways that we can cut those down and different tools we can use. So we're going to kind of explore a few kitchen tools today too. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll put some. Uh, uh, pickled vegetables in there. We'll make a really cool dipping sauce uh, with. Uh, 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 QP mayonnaise and sriracha and ginger, and then I'll uh, uh, pass along a cool little kitchen hack to you all too if you don't happen to have a squirt. So um, we'll I'll show you some cool tricks with that. Um, then the other dish, the dish that we're going to do is one of my favorite dishes. Uh, had it uh, years ago. Something you can have for lunch, dinner, and even breakfast, uh, and that is chile quiles. And so we're going to make a uh, a chipotle uh, pepper sauce with that, and um, kind of uh, briefly cook the chips in that sauce. And then we're going to add uh, some leftover hamburgers. So I've got about four of them here that I've diced up, and we're going to add that to the sauce. We'll put that over the chips. And then we'll put some uh, queso fresco cheese on there. And then we're going to crack some eggs on top. We'll bake that in the oven for a little bit. And uh, it'll be this really cool kind of saucy chip, uh, almost like nachos. But um, instead of cheese in there, you've got that cool sauce, that that uh, cool sauce in there. So um, I think we'll just go ahead and Nice. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot you're doing chili quiles. That's yeah, there's uh, so many different ways you can do chili well. quiles. You can, uh, you know, if, if you don't want to go through the process of making a sauce for it, you can definitely use a salsa. I've even seen it done with uh, green chili as well. So it's uh, kind of like a New Mexican chili quiles or like a Colorado green chili chili quiles there. So uh, that's that's a lot of fun there. So all right, well, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do first is uh, we're going to get um, our chile quiles going. All right. So with that, um, uh, what I've got here is I've got some diced onion. I've got some chopped up bell pepper here. All right. We've got some garlic here and all this is going to get pureed. So we can kind of chunk this, st this stuff up a little bit. And I've got some, uh, one little chipotle chili here. All right. Now my kids aren't really big on kind of the, the tomato flavor yet. And they're, you know, they're not too big on, those tomato seeds in there. So actually what I'm going to do today uh, for a little bit more sauce, I'm just going to use a, a small can of um, a V8 tomato juice there. So, uh, but still with all those other flavors in there, and we'll add some cilantro in there too. Um, that'll be, it'll be, it'll be great. So um, what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to fire up our cast iron skillet. All right. So basically this is kind of, this is, this is kind of a cool dish too, because it's, it's more or less a one pot dish. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to briefly. Oh, yeah, it's great. You only have to use one pan. Uh, this thing you can, you know, with my cast iron here, I can cook on the stovetop and then I can go directly in the oven with it. And so what I'm going to do today 
is uh, I'll briefly sear um, our our hamburger meat in there, uh, our diced up uh, leftover hamburgers there. Um, pull those out, and we'll add our vegetables to it, and we create our sauce in there, um, and then we'll puree that, and then we'll add everything back into the pan with our chips, and then we'll put that in the oven. So it's kind of a kind of a cool thing here. I need to pull out some oil here really quick. Yeah. Yeah. So the cool thing about chilaquiles is you can use whatever sauce you have too. You know, like um, I think I've got some random. Uh, enchilada sauce. You know what here. I do too. I've you got know, some. Uh, if you have any canned canned enchilada sauce here, some green chili enchilada sauce. Yeah, I, think, I think you said green chili earlier. Yeah, like green chili is always a good. Yeah, one. I've got. Um, yeah, I've got a green chili uh, salsa that I've had in the fridge. Um, it's a brand down in New Mexico. There, it's a great, great little uh, green chili sauce. So yeah, you you know it's kind of one of those things you can kind of use. You know, if you've got some leftover stuff in your fridge, and I personally, I love cooking leftover foods. I like doing something different with a leftover food. So uh, that's also why we why we um, chose to do that today. It's one of my favorite things. So, uh, you know, I remember as a kid, um, usually like on, uh, you know, m- middle of the week or something, mom would always, mom would always do what she called it a garbage soup, you know, but uh, she would just kind of, you know, pull some leftover things out of the fridge and, um, you know, um, I can't think of now what, what exactly she put in there or what she put in this at the time, but, um, you know, then she would, uh, go ahead and add our burger meat here to there. Yeah. All right. And really what we want to do. Yeah. You know, and sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know, like a microwave hamburger isn't the best, right? So, you know, we try to use, uh, you know, try to figure out another way we can do it. And, you know, ribs, Lover, they're really the, cold they're hamburger best, meat that ends fresh up off the grill there, or, um, this is fresh out of the crock pot of the oven. Um, and so, we're, you know, again, we're just trying to figure out a different way to use them there. So we'll let that saute for a little bit. <clears throat> um, and like I said, and on this recipe, you know, you, you can make it as spicy as you want. Um, you can add in, you know, a couple of chipotle chilies if you wanted, um, or even like a chopped up poblano. And, and I think actually the, the, the recipe calls for that poblano in there. Um, but I really like that, uh, smokiness from the chipotle. And that's going to add just a little bit of spice there, uh, with the chipotle and the poblano in there. It'd be a little spicy. Um, you know, so you can kind of play around with that a little bit, but, uh, so we just kind of want to warm up this hamburger a little bit here. <clears throat> and, uh, that way when it goes into the oven, it's not really cold because the eggs won't take too long. We really just want to cook it until the eggs are done. So let's go ahead and get that going there. I like to stir a lot. Okay. All right. So Jimmy, who do, who do we have joining us today? If, if, any any comments rolling through at all? Or, yeah, actually, I was just gonna, gonna say, call anybody out. I was just gonna say, let's get into that. Uh, we have Alice; she's watching. Uh, Diane Leonard, thank you. You two always join us. It's so great to see you. Um, Hi, Alice. Hi, Aunt Diane. Um, so funny story. Hold on, hold on, if I can share a personal. Oh, Kathy sorry. Rice says yep. most of the time it involves spaghetti as a base. <laughs> oh, the garbage soup. Yes, of yep. course. <laughs> and uh and diane says my son nick likes garbage soup too over biscuits so D- diane and kathy are, are sisters oh great so okay there we go they, they, they probably they learned that from probably learned that from grandma uh, same same grandma t- that taught me how to uh snap green snap the tops of green beans when i was a kid oh so there we go that's fun yeah all right, so we're just going to pull off this hamburger now, and we'll get these other vegetables going. <clears throat> and one thing I like about cast irons, you know, they take a little while to heat up, um, but they hold heat really, really well. And depending on how old the cast iron is or how well seasoned it is, um, seasoning means that it has a nice little you know, coating of oil on there all the time. Um, it'll heat 
fairly consistently, pretty evenly throughout. So we're just going to dump all this stuff in at the same time. There you go. Yeah, I like the, I like the cast like iron because it definitely it holds its heat. And even when you put something a little bit cooler in it, um, it just has so much mass yeah. that it stays hot. Yeah. I like cooking in Dutch ovens, Jimmy. I know you and I both have both have some Dutch ovens we use for camping. Uh, it seems to be great over over a campfire. Oh yeah, yep. They were great. So you know, we still we just okay, we still so need gonna, to set up our uh, outdoor camp rogue kitchen sometime. Absolutely, that would be fun. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of salt here to these. That salt will kind of help pull, will help pull out the moisture. Uh, on in the vegetables as well as seasoning, yep. uh, vegetables as well. You know, and there we go. there's a better view for everybody. Sorry about that. All right. You could use red onion in this too if you wanted. Um, like I said, if you wanted to skip this step altogether and just do um, just do a pre-made salsa or sauce. You could definitely do that. And again, this is all going to get blended, so we don't really need to worry about chopping up our chipotle at this point. Get some nice roasted flavor on that. Okay, so now we, we don't want our our liquid to completely evaporate, so I'm going to go ahead and turn down our, our heat here a bit. And add in our... Our tomato juice here. Uh, so I'm going to wait here a little bit on that. While we wait, Aunt Diane has a question. Um, okay. She loves food cooked in cast iron. So do I. So do you. Uh, but cleaning cast iron is a pain. Is there an easy way to clean them? So, <laughs> not really. I mean, you know, if you know, cook, you know, with a little bit of of, of hot water, and if you get that. You know that uh, food sticking on the bottom that does have to come off, and um, you know, I, you know the way I like to do that, of course, is just putting salt on the bottom, using yeah. your salt um, as as uh, as your abrasive material. So add this in there. Yeah. So yeah, if your liquid evaporates a little too much on here, you know, we, we can always add a little yeah. bit more liquid as well. Whether water, or chicken stock, or something. Um, so, I mean, I guess something you that helps clean it up too, in there too if you want. is, you know, you know, after you're done cooking, if there's some bits stuck in the bottom there, um, sometimes you can just put a little bit of water in there and get a little bit of heat on it, um, and then just take a wooden spoon and kind of yeah. rub it around and kind of use that to get everything off. Um, but I think the best yeah, thing is, is really to keep your your uh, cast iron well seasoned and nice and clean. Um, See, Kathy Rice says, try a half a potato with some kosher salt and just scrub with it. That's a great idea. I think, I, I think I'm going to try that next time. Yeah, that definitely is a good idea. You don't have to ruin a sponge that way. And, you know, you can compost a potato afterwards, too. So, all right. All right, so we're going to let that simmer until our vegetables are tender. And while that is happening, I'm going to go ahead and take our ribs here. We got these guys from Corner Post. Uh, they're wonderful ribs. Uh, I cook these in a sous vide cooker, and uh, oh, yeah, see, you're not. I'll, sh I'll show you yours here. if you showed me mine. Jimmy, you I show I'll show you mine if you show me yours. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Here. So here's the sous vide. Got here's my. Yeah, I, yeah oh, we got the same one. We got the exact same one. Yep. A Nova Bluetooth. Yep. Oh yeah, these things are great. Um, I think they're under a hundred bucks now. Oh, so. Um, so mine. I have this little rack here yeah. too, kind of help things stand up in there. Um, I think we'll do a whole nother show on sous vide sometime. Um, but just. A, yeah, we definitely should. Keep my water in there. Trade out my water if it ever gets dirty. Um, but so everybody that's been getting deliveries um, from like Amazon Prime or Prime Now or something. Um, I saved some of this uh, insulation material, and that, my, my box actually fit right in it, and now it holds temp even better than before. So uh, the Ano was really good about keeping oh, a within a degree idea. or two, um, but yeah. having that um, extra insulation around there really kind of keeps it um, right on point. 
that's a great idea. You know, uh, I usually just use plastic wrap. Um, like I think you taught me that. Yeah, plastic, yep, wrap, plastic wrap works. <laughs> you know, so, and you know what else a sous vide works great for, Jimmy? That um, actually didn't occur to me until Chef Jackson Lamb told me about it. I need to thaw out a piece of meat. Oh yeah, a frozen piece of meat, right? And instead of running a bunch of tap water through it and wasting all that tap water, I just turn my sous vide down to 40 degrees. Obviously, it doesn't chill, but with the temperature of the water coming out of the tap and the piece of frozen meat, I just use a sous vide and it circulates the water in there and the piece of meat thaws out within about an hour, hour and a half, of course, depending on the size. Um, but uh, it works great for thawing selling frozen pieces yeah, of meat definitely. too so yep uh, i do the same thing too and uh sometimes i'll just dip it put it in a ziploc bag or um you know i also get yeah. a lot of my meats from corner post and as long as it's uh, uh the, as long as the bag isn't puncturing anything i can just drop it straight in there and thaw it right there just like that because they do uh, vacuum sealing um but you do want to be careful because if there's yeah. a puncture in whatever you're doing and it's raw meat uh then you are gonna make, make sure you're changing out your water yeah, definitely. And you definitely want your piece of meat to get waterlogged. And especially if you've gone through the process, too, of seasoning it or marinating it. You want to make sure it's totally yeah. sealed and completely submerged in the water there. So. Okay, so I'm going to break down these these ribs here. I'm going to tilt the screen down. So this is really, you know, fairly simple. All we're doing is just cutting the meat off the bone here. So you can just kind of follow the bone with your knife there and then those bones just come right out like so So we get down to the end, right? Or we can tear it too, right? I mean, so we've got our pre-cooked ribs, so we can go ahead and just tear our bones right out of there. I'm going to uh, check on our sauce. We're doing good here on that. Might need to add a little bit more moisture there. But, uh, yeah, looks like it's pretty good. We can keep an eye so, on it for you. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, let me know if... Uh, We'll get a little dry a back there. Yeah, there's plenty of liquid in there. You're doing good. It's a nice uh, All right. rolling simmer for you. Very good. All right, um, let's see here. Brittany Rice, thanks for joining us. Hey, Brittany, how are you? All right, so we're almost done there. You just kind of have to look through the ribs, too, make sure we don't get any small pieces of uh, a bone in there we'll just peel these guys right off Whew. pretty tender ribs there all right and so this the the ribs here that i'm cutting um of course i'm kind of jumping to another recipe here but you know we didn't want to stand there and just watch our sauce simmer so we're, we'll go ahead and break these guys down now and then I think they'll just peel it's right kind of off. A fun recipe with leftover ribs too um, is uh, yeah. take your leftover ribs and then you can actually chop them up like you're about to, and then you mix in some ground pork, yeah, and some raw ground pork, and make little patties, and then uh, you can uh, make your own McRibs at home. Oh yeah, yeah. We talked about doing that. That'd be fun. Okay, so I'm just going to discard our bones here. I'm going to check our sauce back over here and wash my hands really quick. It's important to keep your hands clean and keep sanitation in mind in the kitchen. Yeah, check on that. Hands still looking good over there. All right. You can hear it a little bit. Feels, feels like, or sounds like it might be getting a little dry in the middle. So. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the hey, heat off on that guy. You don't want all the liquid guy. to go away, right? Probably, you yeah. need some liquid for the... Uh, for the chips to soak up. Yep. Yep. All right. So we'll go ahead and put these in a bowl for now. And we will come back to those here in just a second. So, all right. So now we're ready to, um, we're ready to pull our sauce. Okay. Okay. Uh, off, off the heat here. And actually, in the meantime, I'm going to add just a little bit more water here, a little more liquid. And again, you can use chicken stock with this. All right. We've got a nice concentration of flavor in there, though. And if you did cook the liquid out too much, uh, would you want to add some more water, some more stock or something? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you, you just need enough to really kind of help it turn in the blender. So um, let me kind of tilt, turn the screen here just there a bit go. there. So we'll uh, put it right in the blender. Obviously, we don't feel comfortable with kind of going up this high with, you know, with a uh, cast iron skillet over a blender. You could always scoop it out or put your blender hey, down Jeffrey's a little bit lower. Well, who's Jeff that? Cook. I'm sorry. Hey, Jeff. Oh, hey, Chef Cook. All right. Yeah, and so one thing with uh, putting hot food into Get a blender, in you want to be very careful um, when you go to start blending. Make sure your lid's on there. I'm sure Jason's about to show us. Make sure those little flaps are all the way down. Yep, so lid on. Make yep. sure it's secure. All right, and then I just put this on. All right, we don't want to seal it too much because we need that hot air to escape so it doesn't blow up everywhere. All right, so I just kind of set it on there, but I still always put a kitchen towel over it. Yep. You know, how many Absolutely. times I've seen people get burned, you know, blending things. So we'll just blend this up really we, quick. Sometimes when you're loud. doing that, all that hot air that releases and it just releases a little bit extra gas, will actually push the lid up a little bit. And if you yeah. don't have that towel on there, I've had splatter yep. just like come up and shoot up out of the side too. So yeah, you definitely want to be careful with that. Now, the one thing about a blender is that it can blend it really, you can blend your sauce really smooth, or you can make it even a little bit chunkier. So we're going to go ahead and check this guy out here. It's got a little bit more chunk than what I'd like, so I'm going to go ahead and blend it up a little bit more. We'll turn up the uh, speed here on this guy a little bit. And... Vitamix too. Vitamix gets the job. The Vitamix definitely What's gets that? the job done. Oh, I love the Vitamix. It's a great little tool to have. Okay, now we've got a nice. Mm, got some smokiness there from the Chipotle. We got a nice that roasted bell pepper flavor going on in there. Like we got a couple more viewers popping okay. on. Feel free to say hi in the comments. And we got some a little bit of chunk to it to add some texture to it there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is uh, come back over here. We'll throw in our meat. And our pan is still a little warm. We don't really want to put the heat back on it. And pour in our sauce here. And then you just kind of want to stir this guy up a bit. Get all that meat nice and coated with our with our sauce. All right. Now, usually you can, um, if you wanted to cut corn tortillas, you know, cut them into uh, chips, you know, like little triangles or something, um, and then fry them in oil. You can do that. Uh, I kind of take the easy route though. I use a, it's kind of a good sturdy chip. You know, something that's not going to be really thin. Because um, yeah, it's got to soak up some of that liquid. And just, if you use those really thin ones, like yeah, definitely. Uh, like the restaurant thin ones, not very good for this. You definitely want something a little heartier, um, something that soaks up that liquid, so you can still still has a bite to it when you put it in your mouth. Yep. So we'll just throw some chips in. We can always gradually yeah, add some Andrew in Crowder here. Saying hi, Jason. Oh, very good. Hi, Andrea. Uh, Susan Condor, thanks for joining us. Now we'll just kind of stir this guy up without breaking up our chips too much here. It's okay if you break them up a little bit. It kind of adds to the texture a little bit once it soaks all that up. Yeah, absolutely. Just kind of, kind of that folding motion, yep. kind of like with the yep. with a mousse or something. You're just kind of folding from the outside, flipping it yep. over. Yep, just getting some of that stuff coated up in there a little bit. The great thing about this dish is that you, know, you can do scoops of it, so... Be, you know, it doesn't need to be completely coated. Okay, so now we've got our our chips and our sauce and our meat in there. So now we'll take our eggs here and we'll just kind of randomly crack our our eggs in here. And again, these kind are of cook cooking the liquid, right? In the uh, yeah. yeah. So again, that's what you you really want to make sure you have some liquid in there because. 
Um, all that steam kind of coming up will wrap it around the eggs and kind of cook the outsides, and, and you can leave them kind of runny if you want. Yeah, you could definitely uh, add some more eggs if you wanted to. Okay, so we'll pop that guy in the oven. All right, now. So we'll let that go for about 10 minutes. Are you just minutes, going in a hot oven we'll take or it out. under a broiler? Uh, into a hot oven, 350. We don't want to burn the chips. Um, you know, we definitely want to uh, just just enough to cook the eggs and kind of heat everything through. So, yeah, we, you know, nothing's, nothing's worse than having some burnt chips. <laughs> so let me get my cutting board to get all washed off. Oop. And then... Everything, uh, everything all right over there? Get back to... Yeah, <laughs> I'll call you if I need <laughs> it's an emergency. Here. Well, I don't, I don't think I can get there fast enough. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So while that's cooking, like I said, we'll go for about 10 minutes here. We'll check it every now and again, you know, and depending on how the oven is and, of course, how warm the product is too, you know, it could cook um, a little bit sooner. Or, so just kind of have to watch it there right. a little bit. So, okay, so... Um, you know, of course, then we'll come back through and we'll top it off with our cheese, or with our queso yeah, fresco about how cheese. Long you want it in the oven. And um, uh, total, you probably about 15 minutes, 15, 16 minutes right. for like some just okay. well, uh, we'll enough to get your eggs all the time in my fully house. cooked there. Hey, Google, start a timer for 15 minutes. Hey, 15. there you go. <laughs> I've, I've got a, I turned on a, a timer right. here behind me. Um, you know, on, on the oven there, so we're, we're good to go there. But um, Okay, so on these rolls, then on the hand rolls, all right, so we're going to set up a little saute pan. Um, first, let's check out um, um, our pickled carrots here, okay? Oh, so we're, uh, you know, with this one, just just simple. We're going to add some um, carrots. Um, and, uh, oh, you know, um, you can also add, like, uh, pickled radishes, too, if you'd like, but... Um, let me uh, tilt the screen down here a bit. So what I've got is I've got this kind of large carrot here, right? And so I'm just going to cut off the top. And then I've got a nice little Y peeler here. I think these are great, the way the way that you can hold it. Um, but, again, you just pick a peeler that's comfortable for you. I just start at the top here, and I just want to take – the skin off. I always like to peel my carrots, even if I'm making a stock. I think um, carrot peelings make things yeah, make your food kind of bitter. bitter for sure. And yeah, and if you don't take that peel off, even if you peel them and put them back in the fridge, they kind of get a little coating on them. You definitely want to peel that off because even yeah, that. I gets think to bitter. a certain extent, it's uh, so, the oxygen kind of reacting to the outside of the carrot. Um, and yeah, I think you're right. Then, what I do on this is, uh, you know, looking at about two inches or so. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got a oh, little nice. ruler here um, on my uh, on my cutting board here. And so we've got about, you know, between like 15 and 20 here. Or, right. Uh, we'll go a little bit longer, maybe about three inches, about like so. All right. You just kind of cut those down a bit. And then... You can make ribbons or you can do julienne cuts, like little matchstick sizes. You can shred your carrot, all right? But um, what I do is just take your peeler here and just make like little ribbons like this. And then as you get down towards the middle, you get these really cool ribbons oh, like go. that. That's perfect. Nice and thin. And and if you make those ribbons... Pickle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. We're just quick pickling these carrots, you know. So and they don't have to be exact sizes either. Really, you know, we're adding some color, we're adding some texture, and we're adding some pickle flavor. And while you're doing so, that, I think we were uh, uh, earlier we were talking about other ways of doing this. I've got a mandolin. You can you can get these for yep. anywhere from fifteen to twenty five bucks um, at a local Asian market. You can order them on Amazon. Uh, it's just a plastic little mandolin. Uh, the blade's angled. What's nice about it is you can take the blade out easily. So you just unscrew here, unscrew here, and put it on a sharpening stone. Um, and then it comes with these little comb attachments. If 
you can see that there. So different sizes. You can use something like this. Uh, if you want a little bit of a bigger ribbon, a little bit thinner, and then even smaller, but that gets kind of hard. Uh, but always do be careful with your fingers yeah. on there. Yeah, and you've got the uh, traditional French mandolin, uh, which is nice because you have the uh, you have the, yep, the yeah, fluted uh, go fret plate on there. Plate on there, yeah. That end there, you just unscrew it, and the blade flips around, and you can make little go fret potatoes on there, which look like a um, like kind of like a waffle there. But um, so yeah, if you didn't, you know. You can use, like I said, you can do the ribbons here like this, um, or, you know, again, you take your carrot and you just kind of cut into little, little strips here, and it does all the knife work for you. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so that's kind of fun there. And if you feel comfortable enough with your, with your, uh, oh, you know what? Actually, one last thing here. Uh, the other one I like to use oh, yeah. too is a yep. cheese grater. Um, now, of course, with pickled carrots, we want kind of long strands. You know, we want some um, some length on our vegetable there. So I just like to do the long. You know, put your carrot long ways like so. And you just make some long shreds like that. This, or you can do the bigger shreds too if you'd like. So you can always. But again, that's going to be. Always grab your food processor too. A little bit. Throw on a shredding attachment. Put it in here. Run it through the food processor. Yep. Definitely. Um, then, of course, if you feel comfortable enough with your knife, you can always, always uh, cut julienne cuts with your knife. So the trick is, well, how do you cut a rolling vegetable? You know. Well, I like to kind of look at the carrot, okay, figure out where I can get the most, you know, or basically kind of look where there's a bump, so yeah, see how it kind of bumps up like that. Ready? All right, so I'm going to, yep, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that end off. All right, we can munch on that or put it on our composter, All right? And then I'm just going to cut pieces about the thickness of my knife here for this. And it's a little bit thicker there, but. We just cut into like uh, basically like little tiles or little planks here, right? And then we can stack those if you'd like, and, you know, with the downward pressure and holding that product square on the cutting board. We just cut into little julienne cuts, right? Of course, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can always cut one plank at a time and cut little julienne cuts like so. And there we've got little nice little matchsticks here that we can use to pickle. All right, and our uh, when we go to pickle, we just want to bring to a boil our uh, rice wine vinegar, sugar, and water. And of course, when we do that, we've got this nice, very sweet vinegary uh, pickled vegetable mix here. All right, so those are done ahead of time there, but man. They're still crunchy, has a has that sweet vinegary nice. bite to it. Uh, so I, th I think Jeff made a comment. Yeah, some really um, came through as a school of hospitality, but watch your knuckles, please. Yes, indeed. Um, when you're working with a mandolin peeler, yeah. even I've yeah. seen people take um, fingertips off with a peeler while they're sitting there peeling. So yes, be very careful. We're handling sharp objects. Yeah. Don't, don't let your finger people... go rogue. Yeah, I've even seen people hurt themselves with <laughs> yeah, a zester, yeah, that's too. Fun. <laughs> that's so fun. That's no fun at all. All right, let me check our Ooh, yeah. chilaquiles here. Oh, yeah. Let's see that over on the oh. device cam. There, oh, see, there it is, the, yeah. yeah. Eggs are starting to set. Beginning? Oh, yeah. we got about two more minutes there, and then we're going to put our cheese on top. Okay, and then we're going to add some fresh cilantro to that. All right, it'll be delicious. Right. Okay. Real quick, um, so, Alice asks if we can uh, pickle onions this way. Um, so, yeah, what we're oh, doing absolutely. is just a quick pickle, really. Uh, we can take, you can do carrots, you can do radishes, you can do onions. Um, I've done thin slices of pineapple, um, different fruits and stuff. Um, and, like, 
what we're doing is just get it nice and thin and then hitting it with that uh, the vinegar and uh, whatever your acid is. Um, and it really just kind of penetrates yeah. into it. Yeah, and it's just kind of like a refrigerator pickle too, you know. We're not, you know, we're not really canning anything, you know, so we don't have to go through the process of boiling our our full cans, you know, our full jars or anything. So this is definitely something that's not going to, or something that you want to use. Kind of yeah, a short we're not going through any time. sort of preservation. So this is really just for the the same flavor profile and a quick, yeah. quickly for a recipe that you want to do right away. Yep. 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 Okay, so I'm going to heat up a saute pan here because next we are going to our rib hand rolls. All right. Okay. Hand rolls. And so, again, hand rolls. Okay. So um, on your rib meat there, if, you know, if you want to break that down a little bit more, you could definitely cut it up. Um, you know, the great thing about ribs is that the meat kind of pulls apart. And this is also something I just thought of this, like, you know how many times I pick up a rotisserie chicken at, at you know at the local grocery store, and I'll use rotisserie chicken for a lot of things, right? It has so many uses. Whether you want to you know eat the chicken whole or um, heck, at times when I grab a rotisserie chicken and a and a family sized bag of Caesar salad and head out the door, and uh, you know you got you got your meal in no time at all. And um, so rotisserie chickens are great. And, um, because you can do the same thing with a rotisserie chicken. You can pull all the meat off of it, and you could glaze the chicken, which we're going we're going to glaze the pork here in just a second. Um, similar to, um, yeah, you, you can glaze the pork, or excuse me, the chicken, and then use that in your yeah, hand roll as well. So. Well, and even for okay. our vegetarian friends out there, um, you know, I I know some people who yep. smoke their tofu, like dry it out, get it nice and dry, smoke it, or seitan or something. Um, or if you have a, some grilled uh, Beyond Meat burgers and stuff, that works perfect for the chilaquiles. Um, and really the flavor yeah. profile we're going for is, uh, you know, just that kind of sweet and tangy with the barbecue uh, from the meat and everything. Um, and, yeah. and so in this, in this yep. recipe, you know, we're kind of mimicking uh, like more of a char siu pork. Um, a, kind of an Asian pork, but using an Americanized um, rib recipe, barbecue ribs. Rib. Yep, yep. And the way I cook these ribs too, you know, usually I put a, I'll, I'll put a big rub on them. What I mean by a big rub is like it has smoked paprika, it has a you know a sweet paprika, and then it has brown sugar and garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, salt. I mean, it's just big. There's so many flavors going on in there. But with this pork. Um, you know, of course we couldn't plan this ahead of time, but you know, I really wanted to kind of mellow out, uh, the flavor a little bit. So I just did a, just did an easy, uh, apple cider vinegar, a little bit of brown sugar and some salt and pepper, cooked them in the sous vide, um, and then just plopped them on the grill for just a little bit, uh, to give them some nice brown color. I didn't even smoke them this time, but you could definitely smoke them, um, that smoke flavor with, uh, with, with all these different flavors in there would be really great too but um so <clears throat> this is just kind of a, a neutral flavor there so um so what i'm doing here is um i'm just combining uh some soy sauce some oyster sauce and then some midden uh marin cooking wine as well so we need about a quarter cup of that there it is okay and then um i'm not going to put any ginger in this uh in this little glaze, um, because we're going to have ginger in our dipping sauce later on, um, so we'll have that ginger component in there. All right. So, okay. So uh, before we do that, let's take a look at our chiles like here. Says you have about two minutes. Oh left. yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So there's our chiles here. We've got some nice, almost sunny side up eggs. All right. A little creamy looking. So now I'm going to take our queso fresco cheese and what i've got here is about eight ounces of cheese and i like using the queso fresco because yeah. it's softer and it's not as salty cotija. as like a cotija so yeah i mean i love cotija like on a fish taco or um you know something that's got some fat to it um i think that saltiness of the cotija is great um but this queso is a little, a little bit more 
yeah. mild, it's creamy. Yeah. So, and again, we don't want to go too crazy with that. And, you know, keep in mind too, that queso fresco doesn't really melt as, uh, or the same way as, we'll go back in yeah, there for really, a few minutes. Uh, it doesn't melt the same way as yeah, cheddar it's a fresh does, cheese. So. And, you know, when they're, when they're making the cheese, um, cause you, you can make queso fresco at home. Um, in fact, I do that and like ricotta at home. Yeah. Um, when you're really doing like a quick curd, nice. um, using like an acid or something to yeah. get the curds out, um, yeah. it, it's more of a firm cheese. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you're right. It doesn't melt quite as much. Yeah. But it's still a really nice yep. creamy cheese to have on there. Um, real quick, so, Pam again, Bornhoft, thank you for different, joining different us. Different. So, yeah. And hey, Pam. I see All Robert right. Bird is watching. Kim Bowman's watching. Hello. Hi, Kim. Hey, Robbie. Okay. So we're just going to add some oil to our pan here. And depending on, you know, how much fat your ribs have, you don't really want to add too much. Where my, there they are. Now we've got that nice sear going on there. Let me break these guys up a little bit here. All right. Sometimes these pork ribs have this silver skin in here. I forgot to remove that. There we go. Well, it's not really silver skin. Yeah, just that membrane on the inside there. of the ribs. Wanna, sometimes you move. If you watch our rib video yeah. on YouTube, make and sure you just... take that off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You did that in a few months back, didn't you? All right. So, again, here we're just kind of warming it up. All right. We can get a little bit of sear on there. So one thing I one, – one, one of my favorite textures – um, is, uh, yeah, not just a flavor, but a texture, uh, is, uh, crispy oh, yeah. pieces of pork. Um, you know, I love like a, you know, like a yeah. carnitas style. Yeah, like when style you get carnitas and, pork, and then you, you put know? it under the broiler and you get like the crunchy pieces. Yeah, oh yeah. That's, that's the best. Yeah. I love that. It's great. Oh yeah. I fry Haley some pork up. And some love. Uh, hey, Keith hey, and Robbie hey. are together, and Brooke's over there yeah. too. Thanks for watching. Brooke is my wife. I kicked her out of the household. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Brooke. <laughs> okay, so we'll just kind of saute that up a bit. All right. Now we'll take our our, mar our uh, glaze here. We're gonna All pour right. that right in. Now this we want to reduce a little bit. You want to kind of okay. concentrate those flavors and those sugars start to caramelize a little bit and thicken up, right? Oh, let's see how the, oh man, I wish y'all could smell this. It smells so good. Yeah. Again, I wish I could be there, right. but hey, <laughs> next week, we're going we're gonna to be... Next week? Oh, Hopefully, yeah, we're going to be filming this together, distanced, masked, shielded, um, at the Hospitality Learning yep. Center. Uh, we're going to try to start start moving down there and yeah. turn uh, one of our kitchens into kind of a, a studio kitchen. That way we can do some filming from there, do our live feeds from there. Then I don't have to cook my family out of the house. You don't have to kick your family out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And one, and, uh, we're going to be doing um, mac yep, and cheese. Yep. So next, right? uh, and actually, so two things. Well, three things. So we're going to be live from the HLC. Um, it is also National Mac and Cheese Day. Um, and so this month is National Culinary Month. And we're kind of hitting some of the, uh, the national food days, if you will. Um, and next Tuesday, so we're moving it to Tuesday for next week. Because uh, I'm going to be out of town on Wednesday, headed up to Idaho. And going to spend some time in a cabin by ourselves. So as socially distant as we could possibly get. Nice. Um, but so, yeah, Tuesday we're yeah. going to do a mac and cheese, and we're actually going to do a three-ingredient mac and cheese uh, that consists of sodium citrate. Um, and actually we'll put a link in the event that we post later for that um, on that ingredient. You can order yep. it on Amazon. Um, you can find it at some places like uh, Savory Spice Shop or Penzi's. Um, but it's a really cool mac and cheese uh, yep. recipe because it's only three ingredients. It's sodium citrate, cheese, and some sort of liquid. It could be water, it could be beer, it could be milk, heavy cream, whatever you want. Um, and then, so I guess technically four because yep. we have the pasta. Um, so you can either do a pasta, I do uh, roasted cauliflower, 
Um, and we'll, we'll, show, we'll show a few different options Ooh. there. Uh, but we're going to kind of continue the theme of clearing out the fridge. Um, I've got all kinds of stuff in my fridge. i got some kimchi yes. i got to eat up. Um, I've got some, some bratwurst that we oh, got to yeah. cook up. Um, I'm sure we're, we're going to have some more rest, uh, leftovers <coughs> after this week of cooking. Um, so we're going to take yep. mac and cheese and, as Jackson would say, kick it up a level. And, uh, you know, do yep. some, uh, some fun mac and cheese recipes. So be sure to join us next week for that. Yeah, that'll be fun. That will be very exciting. I'm really excited to uh, share that with people because, uh, you know, sodium citrate sounds a little intimidating. It's actually, but, yeah, it's actually a, you know, like, uh, a melting salt for cheeses. It's used, used in cheeses all the time. Yeah, it's pretty fun to use there. And, again, three ingredients in the mac and cheese. I mean, well, four with the pasta. But see, this is why I was talking Great. about when, you, All right. when we do this in person, I finally get to taste some of the food. So, yes, I know. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so I dumped out um, our pork there, right? So now we're nice and, and glazed and looking uh, nice. shiny yeah, there. Yeah, really well. Be... Yeah, so now I'm going to take our cilantro here. Now, using cilantro, I like to use the stems and all. Um, I think they have... They, they provide the most flavor. Um, and I have worked in kitchens before where we had to peel every <laughs> single leaf off of every single stem. And uh, well, that's great. But uh, then I worked for a chef in North Carolina. We used the whole stem and everything. So well, the way I like to chop parsley, I like the chiffonade part, or uh, excuse me, cilantro. Okay. So we take our, our whole bunch like so, and I just kind of fold it and kind of roll it back a little bit. Like that, you just kind of roll it up tight, like a cigar, about like so. That's it, all right. And then, kind of fold that little tip back a little bit, and just cut into small strips. All right. If you can see behind me, I pulled out the chilaquiles with Let's the melted look. queso, cooked there eggs. It is. All right. And and I'm a cilantro freak too, so I, I like to put cilantro in a lot yeah. of things. It's not we like know, we know there's so. half of you out there Frank's that don't like it. Out. Sorry, we're not we're not trying to be biased, but we <laughs> love we love cilantro. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go just right on top here. Right. Oh, let me get over there. There it is. Nice. Okay. So we'll let that hang out for a bit until we make some rolls. All right, and we'll plate some of that stuff up, and we'll. See the finished yeah, the product thing about here. That is, like you said earlier, so, it's a one-pot dish, using leftovers. Um, yeah. So you know, if, if you have yep. some of these ingredients on hand, you can just throw this together in one pot, be done. Um, easy cleanup. Yeah. And it's actually, and it's too, you know, a different something to do other than just yeah. nachos too. You know, so that's fun. But okay, so on these hand rolls here so i'm on the i'm gonna let the meat cool off here a little bit i'm gonna keep okay. the screen down and what i'm gonna do is uh i'm gonna, sh I'm gonna make a little qp mayonnaise and, and sriracha sauce all right and then i'll uh show you that cool hack i was talking about earlier with the with the uh sandwich baggie here so sure. go ahead and open up our qp mayonnaise here yep Exactly. Now, if you're going with just right. QP, so this is really a taste. For just drizzling. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, do I need to cut the top off of that guy? Yep, there's a cap on there. Cool. You can find QP mayonnaise at almost every Asian market. We've got a great H Mart down here uh, that we use. So, yeah, you know, it's a great, great little, great little nozzle there. So, so again, this is just kind of a uh, mix and a, you know, kind of yeah, a make by... What is the difference by, between uh, QP mayo or, and regular yeah, mayo? Make, make, make by feel. Um, I'm going to be <laughs> honest and say I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Um, yeah, so I, I believe, so sometimes it has, um, like QP specifically has a little bit more Asian flavors, so I think they're using uh, more of a mirin or um, like a rice wine uh, vinegar and a little bit of Sometimes they can have a sesame oil. Um, and so you can make your own aioli at home, um, and you just add some of those other flavors. Instead of, instead of using white vinegar, you can use rice vinegar. 
um, instead of you, you still want to use mostly a you know, canola oil or a avocado oil or something. Um, and then you just do a dash of uh, sesame oil in there and it just gives it that nice kind of robust flavor. Yeah, and as, as, as I tasted this here too, it's definitely has a little bit more of a, of a tang it's got to a great it. Tang. So um, you can definitely taste a little bit the ginger and definitely the sesame oil. You can definitely taste that in there. So, all right, well, so we'll add just a, a little bit of sriracha here, not too much. All right. And now it's ginger. Of course, I'm going to pull out one of my favorite kitchen tools of all time, my microplane. All right. Now, when I use ginger, I just grade the entire thing. I leave the peel on. Um, if that's not something that that um, that you want to do, you know, you could always use the spoon trick, right, where you take your spoon, grate it all off there. Hey, Christian just sent me a uh, message off. about QP Mayo. Are you watching, Christian? Comment if you are. <laughs> Sounds like she is. That's cool. All right. So we'll just grade some of our ginger right into our into our uh, mayonnaise and sriracha here. We don't need too much. All right. It's like maybe a half of a teaspoon there. Okay, and I'll take just a little squirt of garlic. Okay, here's 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 a fun. Uh, something I saw on the internet the other day. A guy was uh, showing how to juice a lime, you know, rather than trying to, you know, trying to cut a lime in half, right, and then trying to squeeze it, right, with your hand. So what he was doing was you know, he was cutting into, you know, pieces, right, um, cutting into pieces like so, right, and then juicing yep. those, yep. right? So... I would highly recommend, again, one of those cool kitchen gadgets I think to have on hand, right, is a, let me grab this guy here, yeah. right, is a, um, yep. a little citrus reamer here, right? So they, citrus streamers are great. You just put the tip there in the, in the middle there where all your, all of your lime segments, see how your lime is segmented like so, yep. down to the middle there, and, and you just, Twist it and ream like so. Then you get all of your juice out of your lemon. My bowl's a little dirty here, sorry, but then you get some nice little, you get some nice lemon juice. Um, so that's rather than, you know, making a bunch of cuts on your, on, on your lime and yep. having to squeeze each piece, you can use a little also citrus creamer there. A so, uh, citrus press right fun. here. Mine happens to be a tequila Patron branded one. I, uh, but also, <laughs> if you don't have a reamer, you don't have a citrus press, or you don't have any sort of a citrus juicer, but you got a set of tongs, clamp them down like that. Yep. Or, or a, spoon, a spoon. And just or stick your lemon on there, and you can use that yep. to kind of grind out the rest of the juice. Yep, that's it. So, all kinds of ways to prepare different your different vegetables and different foods in the kitchen. All right, so I'll use one of these pieces here that I cut. We'll just do a little bit of lemon here, or excuse me, lime. I'll mix that guy up. All right. Like so. I love sriracha and I love QP. All right. Definitely now, for this. Yeah, this is going to be good. There's all kinds of, and you can do, uh, you want like a little bit of smokiness in there too. You can maybe chop up a like a you know little uh, chipotle oh, yeah. chili or something yeah, like that in there. Uh, going with the the chili we could add a little southwestern flair to oh. the uh, the hand rolls too. Yep. All right. Ooh, it's got a nice little kick there. Got that spicy ginger, sweet spicy ginger right. in there. So what are we doing with all these ingredients? Okay. So now. Okay. So. <clears throat> Far from putting your sauce into a squirt bottle because everybody owns <laughs> squirt bottles. No, I'm just kidding. All right. I, I, um, I can see two on the screen you know, right now. Nobody. <laughs> you got one back over yeah. there by the stove, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know. Um, so, what we can do here is 
we get ourselves a little little sandwich, a little snack baggie here. All right. Then we take our. In fact, let me find a don't little. Don't forget uh, to fold it. Don't don't forget to fold it down so you don't things. get the edges there. Yep. All right. So we're going to fold it down here. But yeah, because if you get any food product whatsoever in the in the Ziploc part, it won't seal properly. Okay. So we get that down in there like so. We just scoop out our sauce. Dump it right in. Just scraping the sides of your spatula with the bag as you pull it out. Ooh. There we go. All right, now we fold our edges back over. We clean up anything we might have left. Clean out our zipper there. Yeah, made right. a big mess. <laughs> yeah, it happens, right? And we'll leave a, a little opening here, and we'll push everything down to a, one of our oh, corners yeah. here. Yeah, squeeze all of our air out there. Now, what we have... Makeshift piping bag. We've got a little a little baggie here, like that. All right, and whenever we get the rolls made up, when we go to sauce them, we can cut the little corner. We can just snip that off, just a little tiny hole there. All right, and we can squeeze our squeeze our sauce right over our go. rolls there. So we'll put that aside. All right, yeah, we'll jump to, to our rolls this for here. A okay, lot of people. Like, well. Not right now, not too big of crowds, but you know, if you're making a bunch of these ahead of time or something, um, you can make multiple bags and have them ready to go. So that way, whenever you want to bust out some more hand rolls yep. or you know sushi rolls or something, um, you have, and you can do different sauces yep. too and have three different ones going and you know, just bust them out when you need them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and then. I know sometimes some people ask, well, if I do have a squirt bottle, how do I get the sauce from a big bowl into the squirt bottle? And that I can, sh we can do another day, but there's yep. also a trick to that as well. So, okay. So what I've got here is I've got full sheets of nori. All right. Just uh, dried seaweed there. Okay. And so it's kind of hard to cut these without tearing them. So I just use a p pair of kitchen shears yep, and just kind of eye, you know, about halfway in between, like so. It actually cuts. It's like a piece of paper. We've got our two sheets of the two sides of nori here. Okay. So now should be a little bit more organized here with our uh, our station Sorry, here. Sorry, the going here. Right. All right, so I've got some sticky rice here that I cooked up earlier. All right, I uh, rinsed it a few times to wash all the, wash all the starch off. Wait till the water's clear. Um, two cups of um, two cups of rice to um, two and a half cups of water. Brought it to a boil, turn it down, uh, let it simmer for about 12 to 13 minutes um, till the water's gone. Take it off the heat, and then you let it set. And a lot of times, you cook with a um, rices and stuff. It's good to just let the rice yep. steam a little bit, um, rather than take it right off. We could do a whole show on sushi rice. You know, rice. immediately. Um, you know, people season their sushi yeah, rice differently. People use different rices. People use different tools for cutting into it. Um, but for this purpose, if you look at the recipe, um, it's just got some rice, and honestly, you can use leftover rice too. Um, so that's kind of what this is all about—just stuff from your fridge. Yep. If you already have rice from something else, um, or Hell, even if you have a uh, fried rice left over from a uh, takeout or something, you know, why not good. throw Ooh, that man. in there with the uh, barbecue ribs and pickled carrots? Yeah, that would definitely be good. So, okay, so really quick here. So I'm going to dip my hand in some water here. This prevents the rice from sticking too much. All right, and we just kind of want to smush it down on our paper here a little, or on our nori here a little bit. And... Like so. Okay. You know, about halfway. I'm going to cover your sheet about half. All right. Then we'll take a, a piece or two here of our pork. And we just kind of want to put that kind of right in the middle, like yeah, so. Use that, that top left right. corner 
is where it's going to be open. So you kind of want to line everything up. Um, for us viewing it, it's the bottom right corner closest to the carrots. Uh, but you kind of want to line everything up towards that corner because as you roll the hand roll, everything will kind of be presented there. And so when you're thinking about plating and how uh, the hand roll is going to look, yeah, kind of have it um, on that diagonal so that way you can kind of see it. Yep, absolutely. And what I'll do as well is I'll take a few grains of rice and put them down here on the corner because that's going to kind of be our glue to kind of hold these these together here. So, sushi glue. Um, okay, like mashed potatoes sushi and glue. So now we'll take a few of these. Jeff will get that one. Yeah. How you get things to stand up on a plate. Or, yep. All right, so we just want a few pieces of carrot like so. And then again, I'll go back to my cilantro here. Grab a few pieces of that. Like that. All right. Now, as we roll this, we want to roll this bottom left corner first. All right. Kind of on a 45 we'll degree angle. Roll it over, and we want to keep, yep, you know, at a 45 degree angle there. We want to keep it nice and tucked. Keep your food nice and tight against against your wrapper. Yeah, think about it. You're okay. almost making like a little. And we ice just cream roll cone. it. Ice cream cone. That's exactly right. Okay. And I actually need to put some of this rice here on this corner down over here. Forgot about that guy. Some looks like delicious. So. And we just take this and kind of seal it up. Get that stuff out of there so we're not seeing that. And I roll that guy up here. Oop, losing some rice there. Yeah, and so the great thing about hand rolls is you can make a bunch of them, just kind of line them, lay, lay them out. Um, and you're, you're not going back for each little piece of sushi or each piece of roll. You kind of get your own, um, and we're usually good with two to three hand rolls um, in our family each. Um, and sometimes when I can get some really good uh, um, sushi grade fish, uh, we'll just do we'll just knock out a bunch of hand rolls. Um, Robbie and Kate, who if they're still watching, they've they've enjoyed those before um, at, in our household. Um, but yeah, it's just super easy, it's super fun, yep. um, and you know, there's no worry about trying to get your roll perfectly tight when you're trying to make um, sushi rolls. Uh, it's just kind of casual, easy, a little bit quicker. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's a nice little flavor there, too. So we'll do one more here so we can do a little presentation. Right. And I think that is cool. that is the day. Went a little more than an hour here, but... Time, go, time flies when you're having fun. At least I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm having fun, but I'm hungry now. And I still got to cook. Dinner. I know. <laughs> Can't wait to eat. Oh. Now that, there we throw some that cilantro looks in there. Chili quiles look delicious. And again, these are just things out of our fridge, things that we have, you know, quick little recipes. Uh, we'll be doing the same thing with our mac and cheese next week. Yep. So be sure to tune in for that. Yep, a little bit of sushi glue there. And with bring that guy up like so. I'm gonna put a little bit of rice down here on the bottom. I know some people roll them up a little bit different, so you get like this point down there at the bottom. But I'm gonna fold yeah, mine up like, like so. Sushi Ooh, not quite like that. There's actually a place over off 16th Street. Yeah, There's sushi burritos that are awesome. Yep, get out there. Some oh, really? Local restaurants. And these could be a little cleaner too on the with the rice and whatnot. But all right. And we'll take our sriracha oh, QP mayonnaise here, and we just want a little tiny cut. Oh, maybe we got a hole somewhere. Maybe there we go. Seal this guy up. A little tiny cut there. There we go. And now we just kind of, whoop. There you go. There. Beautiful. A little liquidy. But. All right. Now we have 
our baby back rib handles with our sriracha, no, excuse me, sriracha QP mayonnaise. Delicious. And our no, chili like uh, back over ordering, ordering out for sushi. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's Ooh. take a look at those chili quiles oh, real quick. Very good. One last. Let's get let's get a shot of both those. And we can say with that last roll, we can call it a wrap, a nori wrap, if oh, you will. Oh, we call it a wrap. <laughs> all right. Good one. Well, thanks for tuning very in, good. folks. Well, thank you all very much for tuning in today. We really appreciate everybody being here. Um, hope you get some ideas from on how to use some leftover foods, or um, if you didn't want to use a nori, probably use a tortilla or corn tortilla too if you wanted to. Yeah, you can also get a um, soy paper. I know a lot of kids don't like uh, seaweed, uh, but if you go to any of the Asian markets, uh, yeah. they definitely have um, soy paper, and you can get different colored soy papers, which are kind of fun. Um, I've got some that have like little uh, sesame seeds on them too, and the kids can have fun yeah. decorating and making their own hand rolls. Um, you don't have to have yeah, a meat you can with also your use, hand rolls. You can also use rice paper as well. Yep. You just have to heat it up in, in hot water there. Yeah. But those roll up. The kids like those a lot. Yep. And again, with so uh, shrimp in those. vegetarians, you know, any leftover veg, throw it, throw it in a hand roll with some rice and some nori paper and QP sauce, and you're good to go. Very good. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll hang out for a few minutes if anybody has any questions or yep. wants to chat for a bit. But if not, thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next week at the Hospitality Learning Center for Mac and Cheese Day. Take care, everybody. Adios.